It's like, uh, I was made for this. Evans Remains is a relaxing 2D puzzle platformer with beautiful pixel graphics. You start off as a girl named Dysus, who's trying to find Evan, a genius from her organization that went missing in an uninhabited island. While exploring the island, you face puzzles along the way. The platforming is rather simple, you're more likely to rely on memory rather than skill. The game has a strong focus on its story, to the point where the platforming feels secondary. And that's okay by me, the characters are great so far, each of which has an interesting reason why they've come to this mysterious island. One of the characters our protagonist encounters is Clover, a guy found scribbling notes along the beach. Closer to the end of the demo, you find out he's chasing after an artifact to cure his youngest sister, Dysus which just so happens to be your name. So if that cliffhanger doesn't put this game on your wish list, I don't know what will. Haven is a cooperative adventure RPG. You play as two characters, K and U. Our couple here have recently escaped from something called the Apiary, and are hiding on a strange planet. As you can probably see, each of them can glide, making exploration so much fun. Amidst the alien planet you're in, you can find it teeming with life. Some adorable mushroom reptiles, others not so much. The combat is interesting. It's not exactly turn-based, more so using commands at the right time. It really emphasizes cooperation between the two characters. Speaking of which, I love the relationship between Kay and Yu. They play well off each other, and the fantastic voice acting really sells the intimacy and banter between them. Not necessarily a good quality. On the contrary, many people find it very unappealing. Yu? Not sure. The game has many features to play around with their relationship, from gathering ingredients, or cooking, finding new monsters, combat, and of course, how you respond to each other. We are going to need to at some point. We need to be prepared. We need a plan. I'm planning on finishing my plate without hearing about the apiary. And FYI, you are the one that ruined the mood, not me. Now, if you played a little game called Fury, then you'd be quite familiar with the art style and music. I thought Fury was an excellent game, which is why I have high expectations from the game makers for Haven. Sons of Ra, a tower defense game set in Egypt, where two players duke it out for some reason. The game's straightforward. Pick an Egyptian god, spawn units, attack your opponent's keep, boom, you win. See, this caught my eye, since I've always liked Egyptian-themed movies and games. It's nice. Each god- Hey, could you slow down over there? It's not a race! Each god has different abilities. You use different units to counter your opponent's units, and build towers to slow down their advance. Oh yeah? Let's see how you like my catapults. Guys, that's not- it's- it's not just move her up. Oh, come on. You earn money over time to spend on units and buildings. You spend this eye points to cast spells, and over time you can unlock new buildings as well as upgrade them. So if you're looking for a neat little diversion, this might be for you. This is a point-and-click puzzle game about a girl who reflects on memories of her time with an owl-man or man-owl creature thing. The music is wonderful, and it seems to have a major role in their relationship as it pops up throughout her memories. The hand-drawn art is amazing and really adds to the cozy nostalgia the game wants you to feel. The story seems to be about her relationship with Owlman, 
Whether it's a heartwarming or heartbreaking one is something you'll have to find out. Tunche is a beat-em-up brawler. Now, I don't usually play games like this, but honestly, it looked way too cute to pass up. The game takes place in the Amazon. You choose between four characters, each with their own unique kits, and then you go kill stuff. Or in my case, get killed by stuff. Besides being a brawler, it also feels roguelike since there's pyramid death, procedurally generated levels, and you get little buffs at the end of each stage adding even more variation to each playthrough. The combat is quite stylish, and the bosses keep you on edge. So if cute Peruvian co-op brawlers with girls who can throw snakes, spinning fire snakes at people, is something that you like, slap this bad boy on your wishlist. Vigil The Longest Night is a 2D action side-scroller. You play as Layla, a young girl who's part of a vigil, and has returned home to find that things have changed for the worse. Monsters are everywhere, people are missing, all the things necessary for an eldritch horror game. The game feels like a mixture of Dark Souls and Castlevania. Your fighting is based around your stamina, which you use to attack, block, or dodge. You have a wide selection of weapons, of which you can equip three. I don't see why you'd use anything but the bow. Back, foul beast! Back! Ba <laughs> back up! Back up some more! All the way! Yep! Yep! <laughs> yep! <laughs> this is gameplay. Whenever you level up, you can unlock new abilities or upgrades from five different specializations. Now, the art is great, and the combat is decent, but it feels a bit rigid. So whenever you're fighting on platforms or against flying enemies, it becomes a bit tedious especially when there's fall damage. While the main idea of the story so far is interesting, the dialogue between villagers also pass off as tedious sometimes. I should also mention this game is very hard, so prepare to die a lot. My greatest enemy was gravity. The howling, what? Oh, uh, well, I mean, listen, we don't have to fight. Oh, oh no, oh my god, what is that? That is horrifying. Honestly, falling to my death was mercy if it means not fighting whatever the hell that was. Next! Hazel Sky, an atmospheric adventure game about a young boy named Shane, who is stuck on an island. Engineers seem to be of great importance in this world, but in order to become one, he must prove that he's capable of building a flying machine and fly to his home! Gideon! You can collect materials which you use to repair or build said flying machines. While exploring, you learn about the history of this island through previous trainees facing the trial. Throughout the island there are puzzles and obstacles. The game adds a nice little weight to its objects, and the little things like showing your inventory on your character make it feel realistic. Not to mention it is quite gorgeous, especially when you take to the sky. Moving around can feel a bit jerky, especially when you're jumping from platforms. But I will say, the story has a lot of potential. Through someone called Myra, there seems to be conflict between engineers and artists and Gideon, which foreshadows some difficult decisions Shane would have to face. i definitely keep this one on your radar. Quench is a casual puzzle game that's all about nature. You play as the shepherd, and your role is to guide animals on their annual migration to safety, as their world is dying. An elephant shaman has an idea that may save their world, and you agree to help him do just that. I think it's quite creative, using the elements to clear the path in interesting ways as well as to protect your migrating friend. The papercraft inspired art style is lovely, and the music is great. The game was released last year, so unlike the others, you can play it for yourself right now. Going Under I fell in love with this game immediately. Dungeon Crawler? Check. Satirical Office Humor? Check. Weaponizing a stapler against goblins? Yeah, that one's a bit niche, but check! 
You play as an unpaid intern for a company called Fizzle, and your job is to get rid of workers from failed startups. So obviously, that means you kill goblins. You can fight enemies with office junk, use their own weapons against them, or even turn junk into weapons. You also find abilities or apps which help you along the way. Wait, what? What? What is going on? Who are you? Why are you here? No! I will avenge you! Ha <laughs> ha! You find perks throughout the offices, and Fizzle's parent company drops off loot for you. There's a good variety of enemies and wacky NPCs throughout this dungeon. I like how well executed this idea was, and I look forward to its release. Chicory A Colorful Tale is an adventure RPG. Chicory is the wielder of something called the Brush, a magic artifact that lets you add color to the world. However, all the color disappeared, and this is where you come in. From janitor to savior, this lovable dog takes up the mantle to color the world. The pixel graphics and upbeat music make this game so much fun to play. The entire game is your canvas, which you can paint however you like. You solve puzzles, help people, fight off the inevitable darkness that consumes all hope from the world, and collect some cool clothes. I love how much this game encourages you to be your own artist, through either the responses from NPCs or the sheer optimism your character has. So if you want a relaxing game with a goofy sense of humour, this should be on your wishlist. So guys, that's it. These are all the games that caught my interest, and if any have caught yours too, please add them to your wishlist as it supports their game by making it look more marketable. Thanks for watching guys, please remember to like and subscribe if you want more of these indie spotlights.